table marks the 75th anniversary of the invasion which began the Korean War. Join us tonight as we take a look into the history of the war and the people and the ideas behind it. Korea was divided into two independent countries by the U.S. and the Soviet Union after World War II. The Soviets installed a communist government and equipped armed forces in North Korea while the United States provided smaller amounts of aid to non-communist South Korea. On June 25, 1950, North Korea attacked across the South Korean border or the 38th parallel. U.S. President Harry Truman announced that the U.S. would aid South Korea in order to not repeat the appeasement that caused the disaster of World War II. He then sent United States occupation forces into Japan to Korea. President Truman did not want South Korea and the Soviet Union to become too powerful, especially with their ideas of communism. He felt this invasion could lead to a communist spread throughout the world. Korea is a small country, thousands of miles away. But what is happening there is important to every American. On Sunday, June 25th, communist forces attacked the Republic of Korea. Free nations must be on their guard more than ever before against this kind of sneak attack. We are united in detesting communist slavery. We know that the cost of freedom is high, but we are determined to preserve our freedom no matter what the cost. Douglas MacArthur was an American general who commanded the Southwest Pacific in the World War II, oversaw the successful Allied occupation of the post-war Japan, and led the United Nations forces in the Korean War. Gen general Douglas MacArthur bold plan to defeat the North Koreans was to drive the invaders out of South Korea by attacking their supply source, the port city of Inca. He successfully continued to move North Korea out of South Korea. However, the communist government of China warned the U.S. not to war near China's borders. The, the U.S. ignored this and China eventually attacked South Korea and U.S. positions. The arrival of the Chinese troops left the U.S. outnumbered and they were forced to fight back. This created more fighting, threats of nuclear weapons, and more casualties. After this attack, MacArthur wanted to invade China, and when President Truman refused to do so, MacArthur wrote to the White House behind the president's back. He was eventually fired for insubordination. It was with, with the deepest personal regret that I found myself compelled to take this action. General MacArthur is one of our greatest military commanders. But the cause of world peace is much more important than any individual. In July 1951, President Truman and his new military commanders started peace talks at Panmunjom. Still, the fighting continued along the 38th parallel as negotiations stalled. Both sides were willing to accept a ceasefire. Finally, after more than two years of negotiations, the two sides signed an armistice on July 27, 1953. The agreement allowed the prisoners of war to stay where they liked, drew a new boundary near the 38th parallel that gave South Korea an extra 1,500 square miles of territory and created a two-mile-wide demilitarized zone that still exists today. This demilitarized zone, or DMZ, was created as each side agreed to move their troops back 2,000 meters from the front line, creating a buffer zone 2.5 miles wide. The military demarcation line goes down the center of the DMZ and indicates exactly where the front was when the agreement was signed. This zone is regulated by the agreement signed and the amount of military and weapons allowed in this zone is also stated. The Korean War caused mass destruction and many casualties. Nearly 5 million people died. The rate of Korean civ civilians deceased was higher than both World War II and Vietnam War. Hostility between North Korea and South Korea continues today. North Korea remains communist with allies of China and the Soviet Union, while South Korea remains democratic and an ally to the U.S. There are many obvious differences between the North and South Korea today. North Korea recently executed a military defense official for falling asleep during a meeting and talking back to the young leader, Kim Jong-un. Meanwhile, South Korea continues to grow as a vibrant, modern, and industrialized democratic nation. Thank you for joining us tonight. Tune in next week as we commemorate the signing of the Declaration of Independence.